Today, we embark on a journey of precision and performance as we examine the capabilities of a new laser engraver from Commarker. This Commarker B4 boasts a 60-watt JPT MOPA fiber laser, known for its quality and versatility. Primarily designed for engraving metals and plastics, the MOPA laser source extends its functionality to various other materials too. It can produce both white and dark engravings on different surfaces, thanks to its highly adjustable JPT MOPA laser source. Particularly noteworthy is its performance on stainless steel and titanium, where it can achieve intricate engravings in a spectrum of vivid colors. Whether engraving delicate markings with exceptional detail on various types of plastics or aggressive cuts through thick metals, the Ka marker does it with ease. In this video, you will learn what this machine can really do. A while ago, I have reviewed the standard 20-watt Q-switch type of Ka marker B4 fiber laser, which has proven itself to be an amazing laser engraver for the money. But in this video, I will review its bigger brother, the 60-watt JPT MOPA. The machine is substantially larger, as it has three times the power of its smaller brother. Instead of using the cheaper Rakus laser source, it uses the premium laser source from JPT brand, which has a much wider frequency range and provides excellent quality and stability. This model is also a MOPA version, which stands for Master Oscillator Power Amplifier. Compared to a regular Q-switched fiber laser, it has a much higher frequency range, and you can also control the pulse width parameter, which opens another dimension of usability as it enables you to have a much better control over the energy of the individual laser pulses. The machine is very quick to assemble, as you just need to attach the Z-axis column. It comes with two lenses, a 110 and a 200 millimeter lens. The smaller lens is great for producing deep and detailed engravings in metal, and the larger lens is great for larger engravings on metal and plastics and producing colored engravings on stainless steel. It also comes with a set of standard accessories, a pair of safety glasses, a safety shield, and a bracket for hands-free operation. The machine supports EasyCAD software, which comes included on the USB key. And most importantly, this machine also supports Lightburn, which is what I will be using. You also get a set of sample materials and aluminum business cards, which are much thicker than the usual paper-thin cards that come with other machines. I have ordered the more advanced rotary system, which is supposed to be better at engraving larger cylinders compared to the rotary I got with the 20-watt Commarker B4, which I have reviewed previously. I will be testing this rotary in one of my next videos. In the package, you also get a brochure, which illustrates what you can do with this machine, so you can quickly get some ideas of what is possible. With the machine, you also get a data sheet of the JPT laser source installed in this machine, which tells you the basic information about this laser source, and it also illustrates the pulse waveform and a cutoff frequency range, so you can better understand the operating limits of the source. Now let's do some practical tests to see what this machine can really do. Focusing can be done manually or by using the electric lifting motor. Each lens has its own focus distance. The smaller the lens, the shorter the focus distance. You can measure the distance with the included ruler, or you can watch until the three laser dots align on the surface. Using its red light preview, you can preview the outline or the exact vector that will be engraved. This is a very convenient way for fast and precise positioning. This machine can engrave at very high speed. For the first test, I have engraved some small text at high speeds and a simple interval test to see how it performs at high detail engravings. At lower speeds, the engravings were perfect. But at 1000 millimeters per second, the quality started to suffer a bit. And at 3000 millimeters per second, the smallest text was not readable anymore. Here we can also see the individual pulses that laser is producing, as 30 kHz is a very low frequency for such high speed. Using a higher frequency setting would solve this issue. Looking at the interval test, we can see that the edges of the lines are not perfectly aligned when filling with alternating beam direction. This shows that the laser source timings are not set correctly. 
I followed an online tutorial for timing adjustment in Lightburn and ran the test again. Here we can see that the edges are now much better aligned. At 1000 millimeters per second, the text still engraved perfectly, and at 3000 millimeters per second, the text is still well readable. This is an amazing improvement and shows incredible engraving quality, considering the immense speed at which this was engraved. And the interval test shows that the beam is approximately 50 microns thick. Now it's time to engrave some test patterns on mild steel to show you the effect of changing the frequency and pulse width. We can already hear that the larger Q pulse values are removing more material. As we can see, we can produce completely different looking results by changing these parameters. I will repeat this test with lower Q pulse values as they seem to produce some interesting results. Listening to the sound, we can hear that as you increase either the frequency or the pulse width, the engravings sound louder. Lower Q pulse widths are producing a polishing effect. The lower frequencies have produced very shallow engravings, and at high frequencies, the engravings are much deeper as more pulses were generated. I also engraved the same pattern at 20% and 100% power, just to see how it looks at different power levels. I will use the settings that produced polishing effect for cleaning rust and grime from the steel plate that I usually use as a bed for working with my blue diode lasers. It works like a charm. This is a quick way for cleaning the surface. The surface looks brand new. You can use this feature also for cleaning coins and removing rust from intricate parts. Speaking of intricate parts, you can use this machine for engraving with high precision on very small stuff like a tip of this ballpoint pen. You can use it for engraving on painted surfaces too. Engravings on this soft drink can are indistinguishable from the rest of the design. Fiber Laser is also very good at engraving very high details with lightning speed on anodized aluminum. Every time I get blown away by the quality of engravings that this machine can produce. MOPA Fiber Laser enables you to precisely adjust the energy of the laser pulse, which allows you to produce white, black, or gray engravings on anodized aluminum. Darker colors take more time to engrave, as this process is slowly heating the oxide layer which turns it dark. Engravings like these are smooth because the surface does not get ablated. White engravings, on the other hand, remove the oxide layer, producing a deep engraving. It is amazing that we can produce different colors on the same material. Darker colors are smooth and shiny, while white has some texture to it. In the video description, I will include a link to all the test files I used here. It is important to mention that producing black engravings on raw aluminum is much more difficult without applying certain chemicals or coatings. Engravings appear black only at certain angles. Using a MOPA fiber laser, you can produce very nice looking engravings on some plastics, since lowering the Q pulse will prevent the surface from melting too much like it is often the case with normal fiber lasers. Interestingly, if you use the same settings on black acrylic, it results in white engraving. Now it's time to do a more practical test by engraving on this notebook, which is wrapped in faux leather looking material. I will engrave a newspaper style front page, which I have made with Kittle Designer. When engraving plastic materials, fume extraction is very important. The text is engraved with a low power crosshatch fill pattern.
Here is a trick for engraving photos. First, you trace the image to create a shape which is filled with high speed and low power in order to provide a uniform background. Then you engrave an image on top of it, which results in perfect result each time. The outcome looks great, and it makes for a great personalized gift. Fiber laser also works well on leather. You can produce light or dark engravings, depending on the settings and the type of leather. Next, I went to see how well the Kamarker B4 cuts thin stainless steel sheets. This is a 0.1 millimeter thick sheet, which is normally used for making PCB stencils. As you can see, the biggest problem when cutting thin sheets at full power is that the metal warps significantly with each pass. I have added a small delay in the form of adding one more layer with slow speed and zero power, which gives the metal some time to cool down. The cutout is done nicely, but I was not impressed with the result as there is a lot of discoloration due to the excessive heat. I have set up another test, this time trying to engrave a very small text into this stainless sheet. This time I have used the fill pattern, since the text is very small. I used medium speed, low power, and high frequency with a very short Q-pulse and 120 passes. I have also added a zero power sublayer to create a small delay between each pass. As you can see, the material is not heating up as much as before, and the engraving stays clear. The results look pretty nice considering its tiny size. Looking at it through a microscope reveals an amazing level of detail. This experiment proves that the Kamarker B4 MOPA fiber laser is a very versatile machine. You just need to find the correct settings for the job. Next, I tried to cut some 0.4 millimeter thick aluminum business cards. First, I engraved the vector image and then proceeded to cut it out. The cut was made using these settings. For cutting thicker materials, it is very important to add some wobble. Wobble adds small loops to regular lines, effectively making the cut wider. Without it, the cuts are too thin, and the channel gets clogged and cutting progress is significantly reduced in subsequent layers. The result looks incredible. Aluminum does not get discolored due to the heat, and the end product looks amazing. If you don't fully cut out the shapes, you can use the remaining card as a stand. This is one of my favorite things to make with aluminum business cards. Now it's time to try to engrave and cut some 0.8 millimeter thick brass. First, I will engrave one of the most intricate designs I have. I will engrave using fill mode and four crosshatch passes at 40 kilohertz with a cleaning pass in between each engraving pass. The cutting will be done using fast speed and 100 passes with added wobble. It cut through sooner than expected, and I stopped the machine just in time. The cut produced dark edges which could be cleaned by running one more cleaning pass on the finished coin. Looking at it under the microscope, we can see that the engraving is quite deep, considering that I used a small number of passes, but the surface has some pitting and doesn't look as detailed as I would want. I engraved it again using higher frequency and more dense infill. I didn't bother cutting it out, so I can easily differentiate the two. Just by looking at them, we can see that the newer settings have resulted in more contrast. Looking under the microscope, we can see that the newer settings have produced smoother engravings with incredible level of detail and are just as deep as before, if not even more. If the settings were tweaked further, you could produce even better results. After seeing how well the car marker engraved that coin, I was curious to see how deep you can really engrave with this machine.
As I wanted to try out the 3D engraving feature, I have converted a 3D model of a pig into a grayscale image using an online converter. 3D engraving works in a way that the darker the shade, the more passes it will run for that part and the deeper it will be engraved. When setting up the 3D engraving, you should always set up 256 passes, as this is how many shades of gray the grayscale image contains and will produce the smoothest results. If you want to engrave deeper, you should increase the number of passes by 256 each time. I have also added a cleanup pass after every 10 cutting passes to clean up the surface. I chose aggressive cutting settings, which remove a lot of material and produce a lot of interesting noises. After around half an hour, the engraving was done. I manually added an additional cleaning pass across the entire surface. The result looks amazing, and the engraving is much deeper than I thought it would be. Removing this much of material requires good fume extraction and produces a lot of fine dust. Looking under the microscope, we can even distinguish the individual layers. I still can't believe how good it looks and how deep it got engraved in so little time. Now it's time for the fun part. Using the material test generator, I ran a few different settings on stainless steel to see what colors I could get. I tried altering various parameters to see how they affect the outcome. First, I tried varying power and speed parameters which produces a wide palette of colors. Then, I experimented more by varying interval and cue pulse at low values, which produced a discrete set of colors. Lastly, I tried varying power and cue pulse, which gave me even more colors. Some colors can be seen only from certain angles, while others are less dependent on the viewing angle. Then, I engraved this surfer dude to see if it is possible to repeat these colors. The result came out exactly as it should, and I am very happy with it. Engraving colors with a MOPA fiber laser is not fast, and it also takes a lot of experimentation, but the results can be very rewarding. In conclusion, I can say that the Commarker B4 60-watt JPT MOPA fiber laser is an incredibly capable machine which offers a ton of adjustability and tweaking to allow you to get the desired engraving effect. It is astonishingly fast and powerful, as it can dig deep into the material with ease. But it can also be very delicate and precise if needed.